Blah, y'all already know what it is, your boy, Yako, what it do, the outlet to reality, the whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago, what up, this is the place where you want to hide from your drama, oh baby, hide from your baby mama, Aha, just kidding, but anyways, fans, thank you for staying tuned, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, Cha-ching. and today we have one of the best rappers in the Midwest, Dre Morrow, what's up, brother? Man, how you doing, man? How you been? I'm good. Thank you for having me again. Appreciate it. Of course, man. It's been a minute, man. That's why I had to bring you back. Like the song, Many Man. Many, many, <laughs> many, man. Oh, man. But real quick, guys, um, I want to share a quick story that happened to me actually a week ago. So pretty much, for those who don't know, I'm an August baby. My birthday's about to come up. And pretty much i was stuck i was like man what should i do for my birthday should i do it at a boat should i do it maybe at a sweet hotel you know get the whole thing booked but i wasn't really sure i didn't want to do the club because i already did the club so i'm trying to do something else so next you know i hit up this dj dj alexa who's one of the best uh djs for like latin clubs in vegas and the crazy thing is i was hitting him up on instagram we were going back and forth and then he was like, hey, give me a call. So he gave me his personal number, which I, for me, I felt honored. I was like, oh, snap. So I give him a call. And he's like, man, David, so you serious? You trying to do your birthday? I'm like, yeah, man. You know, I'm trying to. This is my first time actually celebrating it at like a spot. So I don't know what to do. He's like, look, man, if you really want to do it, I got a spot. It's called Mariposa Cocina Cocktails. One of the biggest venues in Vegas. And it's fancy, you know what I'm saying? I know the owners personally, so I can make a couple moves if you want it. I'm like, man, for real? He's like, yeah. So pretty much. Party he, time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know it. You know it. So pretty much he made my flyer, which I was really happy. He did it really quick. I met with the owners. Now, here's the crazy part. They're both. Both of the owners are from India, which is interesting because. The food that they serve is all Hispanic food, like seafood, Mexican food. So for me, it was like very different. I've never seen nothing like that ever. So I was like, okay, all right. They're changing it up a bit. Now the owners were so nice. We got to talk. They invited us for dinner. They actually gave us drinks. Like they paid for everything. So it was like really cool. And I was like, man, I feel special. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys really want me in their venue. So I'm like, yo, I feel yeah. like a celebrity. So next thing you know, guys, um, it's actually going to happen. It's going to be uh, August 12th at 8 p.m. I'm very excited. It's going to be popping. Uh, what I do know is I got some TikTok stars coming through. And some big DJs there coming as well. So I'm, I'm really excited. I don't know what to see. But y'all know we're about to party. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I'm happy for you, bro. You deserve it, man. You've been working hard. And I'm sure it's going to be a good time. Vegas was dope, man. I can't wait to go back. So Yeah, you got to so, come yeah, back, fam. Back. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to make moves. It's a vibe out there, man. I just I love the building, you know, the energy. Uh, I, I get some of that vibe here in Chicago, but it's a little different because... It's beautiful out, you know, so everybody's in a good mood all the time in Vegas. And, um, man, I'm happy. This is tough. You said August 12th. Happy birthday, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate How it. How's it going to be? 29. <laughs> okay, cool. So you still, you still in the before 30 club with me. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's my last year to live the youth, they, they say, you know what I'm saying? For real, for real, right? Nah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it's, it's crazy because it feels like yesterday, man, we were like, I, I, I sound old saying it, but like, so it was like yesterday I was 16, you know, like it's, I don't know what the hell happened. And I, cause I, in September, I'll be 27, you know, so we're, we're both getting old. We're both getting up there, man, you know. But at least, we, at least we're both sexy still, so that's what's up. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> that's true bro. That's true. You be giving my podcast some crazy titles, <laughs> sex and rap and shit. Like, <laughs> the shit that goes up on YouTube, like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> hey, it's, it's catchy. It makes people click, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real, for real. For so, real, man. So real quick, guys, you know, for those who don't know, this is Dre Morrow, the best rapper in the Midwest. So, brother, real quick, I heard I, anytime, man, real quick, I heard you did a big event. Right. And yeah, pr man. pretty much I want you to spill the beans. So I heard that you want to be uh, basically shout out at the 92.3 FM. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was a dope performance, man. And the number one prize was to open for a little flip. I didn't win that. But shout out to my boy, Chris Hasty. He won. And uh, he did a great job out there. I seen the footage and all that. 
But you're right. The the second place prize was uh, to get an interview on 92.3. And that'll actually go down in September. So it'll be great timing. You know, I could celebrate my birthday with the radio and shit. <laughs> wow. But, That's amazing, man. That'd be it, cool. It, and tell us a little bit about the event. Like, how did you heard of it or, you know what I'm saying? Um, so one of my buddies, man, he's a promoter. His name is Nico28. Uh, he's an artist, promoter. He does everything, you know. Um, and so I've been friends with him for a while, for about a year. And I've done a few airwave showcases. Um, a few months back, I actually won one of the showcases where the prize was to get your song played on Shade X45. Um, that's actually going to happen this month. I, I won that a few months ago, but. It took a few months, so you're gonna you're gonna be able to hear uh, Midwest Mayhem on Shade X four five sometime this month. I don't have a date yet, but sometime in August. So that was lit. So he's got a bunch of different prizes every time, you know. Um, it's always a great networking event because there's artists from Chicago, from Southern Illinois, from everywhere. My bad. <laughs> so we all come together. Um, so he's he's been throwing them for a while. So this was number eight, and um, man, I really wanted to win this one. I'm not gonna lie, man. I was salty, bro, because I. I, I thought I put together the best set ever, but you know what it is. You can't win them all, you know? So I was just happy for my boy Chris Hasty. I was, I was happy for the opportunity. Uh, Nico was a great guy and he's doing more of them. So anybody that's in the Chicago area, if you want to be a hip hop artist, you want to get your stuff out, you know, look up my boy, Nico 28. He's Nico 28 on Instagram, Facebook, giving them a plug and shit. Um, you know, cause he's got, got dope events. Um, but yeah, and it was in Joliet, Eden's Barn and Grill. Wow, that's amazing, man. That's crazy. And, and tell me a little bit, man. Did you get to see little Flip? Did he show up? No, nah, he wasn't at that event because he's a, he was going to do a show in San Antonio, but whoever. So Chris Ace, because he won, he got to go meet him out there and perform for him. So that was dope, man. And he killed it, man. His live performance was lit. He was he was jumping up and down and getting crazy. Um, so it was a real real tough decision, I think, for like you know for them to make, you know, to, to decide who won. But it was it was a good time, man. It really was. What I love about those events is, like, I do it more for the networking because you meet so many different artists and so many different people, you know. So even if you don't win a prize, like, just showing up, you're already winning, you know, because you're meeting all these people and getting connected for more shows and getting your name out there, getting your social media out there, getting your followers up, you know. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just a good time, man. Wow. And what do you think, uh, why do you think you won? Like, what, what do you think was different from... Well, actually, you know, it's crazy. Um, a lot of it, you know, all the contests are a little different. Sometimes they'll have judges, and the ones that I've won, you know, the judges will choose me. In this particular case, I think he had a great performance. I think I had a great performance, but um, what definitely helped was the people that came with me, because I live in Chicago, so it's like about an hour out. Yeah, uh, A lot of the people left, you know, because, like, it was getting late. It was on a Sunday. It's about like 11 o'clock. Most people wanted to be home. But he lived in Joliet, so he had a bunch of his buddies there. So, you know, I'm not saying that's why. I think he, I think he had a great performance, so I think he deserved to win. But it also helped, man. He had, like, you know, his people there with him. So it kind of taught me, you know, I still got I still have a lot a lot of work to do as far as, like, building my following. So that way, you know, if, if I had a bigger following, there'd be more people there for me, you know. So um, just things that you learn. And uh, sometimes you just can't win them all. You can go out there, give your best show, and it's like, it's just not your night, you know. So. But it was, it was fun. It was great. You, you know you got my vote. Oh, man. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know that, man. You're my homie, bro. You're my homie. Yeah, yeah cause... And, and the great thing, too, is like like you said, you know, like um, like I was saying earlier, like it's just it's just dope to network. Because now, you know, now, I'm, now I know somebody, you know, like this dude, Chris Hasty, he's a talented guy. He's been at a, at a bunch of events. And um, so now he's growing. So now, you know, we're actually planning on working together. He hit me up for a collaboration maybe a few weeks ago. So we're working on, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to send him a song. He'll send me a song. It's kind of how we do it, you know, so we don't you know, have a few tracks together. So I'm really excited about that. He's a talented artist. He can rap fast, rap slow. He's versatile. Kind of looks like Common. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. So it's dope, man. Wow, that's crazy. And, and you know what's interesting, man? Like, uh, I was looking in my old pictures, right, from back in the days, right? Yeah. And I came across one performance that i had you back in the day when i was in college when i was doing a lot of yeah i seen that in your tiktok i was rapping at like the library right yeah you Someone remember yeah, it was a, it was like a book bookstore slash yeah and it was yeah. so cool man because if you watch the video in the beginning everybody was sitting down right i was making them laugh entertaining them and then when you came up to rap 
everybody got up and you could you could tell they were vibing with you like they were moving they're like that's what's up man you know what i'm saying you should send me that full video i thought it was only a clip you got the full video i'd love to see it oh um, yeah, yeah that was fun man that was that was you know no it's crazy about all that is like that was in 2015 i would say that i've been rap rapping you know you know me i've been writing my entire life but i would say that taking it serious as far as your career that was probably the beginning point like in 2015, where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn this to a business. I'm going to take this serious. I'm going to build my website. I'm going to start booking gigs for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like just like, oh, I kind of rap and I'm going to rap here, you know, at Burger King real quick and then, you know, go back to work. It was like, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna do everything, you know? And, and um, so you can see how long is it. That's already since that one's already been like six years. So it takes time. It takes time to like really develop and learn the ins and outs, but it, I wouldn't change it for the world, man. It's been a great experience. That was a great time at, uh, with Northwestern University, right? Oh, Northeastern. I actually Eastern. don't. You could, you Northeastern. I, yeah. I actually, I don't live too far from there, which is hilarious. So I live, I live, uh, I think I pass it up here and there when I'm going, going around town. So I, I remember it every time, you know, it was just a fun experience. Everybody was cool. Teachers were there and shit, you know what I mean? And the students, so it was cool, man. I got to sit in the classes with you and shit. <laughs> I remember that. That yeah. was before. That was that was it was crazy because I had just I had just um, I was going to college too. I was going to UW Parkside in it, and it kind of showed me a different vibe, you know, because UW Parkside is more enclosed. It's, you know, Kenosha is a smaller area, whereas in Northeastern, there's all these different cultures, all these different people, and it was it was great to kind of see everybody, you know. Yeah, it was dope. And I remember when we were there, it was my, I think, English class. It's some some English with grammar, right? No, it was a journalist class. And you were there. Your wife was there. And yeah, yeah. You remember? And then uh, I was like, hey, um, I don't know how this happened. But basically, the professor was like, hey, you want to share a little rap? And you're like, yeah, I'm down. And you did. You spit a little rap. And she's like, and everybody was cheering, man. And this is it was dope <laughs> because... Yeah. It was out of your head, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it was, I was freestyle off the top. Yeah, so it was that's, that's where I broke that. And, and you know, true MCs, you know, like we're always ready. You know, like every freestyle might not be my best one, but I'm always ready to like you know rap for somebody. Or you never know, man. I might walk out of a store and I might see Kanye West. You ever hear that Big Sean story where he walked out of a radio? He walked out of like a radio station because he was there the night before. He forgot his hat or something. He bumped into Kanye West and right there on the spot he. You spit a freestyle for him, so you just never know. You gotta always be ready, you know, as a rapper. You gotta, you gotta keep one in the clip. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's why, like for me as well, like when I go out, right? I don't know if you see my Snapchat or my TikTok, but when I always go out, I don't go at first when I'm, I'm a young kid, right? But back, I will go out just to meet girls, right? Pretty much. Right. But now I have the same mentality as you. Maybe it's a, it's a cousin thing, but when I go out now. I just say to myself, I'm just going to network. I just want to meet people. I want right. to, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Get like different business cards, get their Instagram. They follow me. I follow back. And you're not going to believe this, brother. Most of the people that I have on my podcast that have been celebrities, um, like, I don't know if you saw, I had an episode where I had um, uh, basically Olivera, that's her name. She's a vocal coach for MGK, Machine Gun Kelly. Um, oh, for Jam. Oops, Yeah. Sir. And she has over millions of followers on TikTok and she's she's big and she lives in Vegas. But the thing is, if I never went out that day to go, you would have never bumped in there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I always encourage young people, whether and here's the thing here's and I'm going to be real with you. There's a lot of lot of relationship people that are. Uh, very close minded where they're like, you can't have friends of the opposite sex. You can't get their <laughs> number. But what if that person, that girl, right? You, you already have your boo. But what if that girl is your key to get into the inter inter You feel what I'm saying? Right, right. So you have to network. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> My bad. Oh, welcome, back. <laughs> welcome back welcome back <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that's that's I'm my always <laughs> you're good man you're good but that's what i always say you have to we didn't come in this world to be alone we came here to help each yeah. other network grow that's the only way you can do it honestly yeah man it's like you can't be shy you know you gotta you gotta put yourself out there because the thing is <clears throat> it's like product placement like you know the only reason mcdonald's is so popular I mean, there's a lot of reasons, right? But 
a big one is just because they're everywhere. It's re- real easy to find it. Like literally within a four block radius, you can probably find like two McDonald's anywhere yeah. you are in the world. Right. And even when you're scrolling through Facebook or YouTube, even if it's a quick little three second advertisement, you're going to see the I'm loving it, the McDonald's sign, the the M's, you know, and if that's even their logo. I don't know if the logo, but you know what I'm saying? Like, so as independent businesses, us as being entrepreneurs, artists, comedians, podcasters, whatever, you know, you get into, you got to operate the same way. You can't just like, you know, show up once or twice. And like you say, even, even going out, you meet the right person, but even just being present, even if you don't exchange social media, if you're present in the same location. People are seeing you, people unconsciously have you in their mind. You know what I'm saying? Like after they see you two, three times, oh, that's that one dude. Oh, that's that one guy. Oh, that's, you know what I mean? And then they're more acceptable to maybe, you know, take your product or take your information because they're more familiar with you. So got a point, man. You got to get out there. You can't be shy to meet people. You can't be shy to shake hands and exchange numbers because you just never know. Like you said, that one person, it's like a puzzle. That one person might be the connection to to something even bigger. Um, and, and you know, the, the thing that I've always been told is <clears throat> great manners will take you places that skills won't you know so i'm always the one thing that i love about you i've always loved about you that that, I, that it's true about me is we're chill man we're down to earth you know we're cool people so it's real easy to you know there's some motherfuckers that they they, they think their their crap don't stink you know what i mean or they're kind of weird or they're kind of but we're very down to earth very <clears throat> loving people so it's even easier for us to get to other places because people are going to accept us and they're going to love us like, oh that's that cool dude you know he down to earth you know that, that's that one dude with the podcast you know so uh, most definitely, man. I agree. I agree. That's what's up, fam. Now, real quick, uh, I wanted to ask you <clears> something. <throat> what yeah. any upcoming projects coming up? Any new EP? Any new album? Yeah, man. So um, I'm really excited, man. Um, it's been a while. I know I have been teasing in a lot of my older interviews and my radio appearances because um, I had the I had the intent of creating a new project, but I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I was putting out singles. Uh, but now, I, now, <clears throat> now I have the you know. A vision for what I want. I'm working on an EP. It's going to be about six to seven songs. Um, it's going to be called The Origin Story, and it's going to be kind of comic book theme. And I think it's just going to be hilarious. Um, I mean, it's going to be cool in many ways. I mean, one big way I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it, writing it, and creating it is because this is going to be the first time that I know I have songs where I've talked about my history or talked about who I am, but I'll maybe put pieces of it here and there. But with this project, I really want to engage my audience because i'm starting to develop a following now you know little by little and they're starting to be curious about who i am who i really am you know because everybody knows dream Marl, but possible who who's andy or who's andres you know who's the guy behind dream Marl? what is he like what, what kind of stuff does he do so i'm hoping with this project i could really actually introduce the world to who i really am and how i became dream Marl, like why i became dream Marl, the origin story like when you watch the origin story of a of a villain or of a superhero you kind of get in the the background story. So, um, and a lot of my music, sometimes I feel like in the past I was rapping to, to rap, you know, it sounds obvious, but you know what I mean? Like I was rapping to prove myself. I was rapping to either out rap all the other artists. I was rapping to show off, to, to display my abilities. And, you know, as an MC, you gotta, you know, it's, it's almost like a sport. Rapping is like boxing kind of like, you gotta be ready to, like I even told you, you gotta have one in the clip, you know, ready to go. But I think I've reached a point in my career who I am as an artist where, you know, anyone that knows me, they know I, they know I can rap. You know, you, you introduced me as one of the dopest in the Midwest, which I appreciate it, man. But most people, they come across me, they can listen to one of my songs, and they know I'm a dope hip-hop artist. So now I want to transition and start to, like, introduce them to who I am, you know? And with that, I, I really hope to build an even stronger connection with my audience. So I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think everyone is going to enjoy it. It's going to be a very different style of music and a variety of different types of songs. Still going to be me. Still going to be spitting crazy. Still going to be lyrical. But like I said, it's going to be more introducing you more into my life. So I'll be lit. I can kind of <laughs> guess what you're going to put in your rap. You ready for this? This is how you know I know you so yeah. well. You ready for this? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So you're definitely going to mention about Dragon Ball Z because that's been a big there deal. <laughs> WWE, <laughs> WWF. I know you're gonna squeeze it in somehow. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be like, yo, For you sure. know what I'm saying? Like go to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. That's one thing I remember when um I remember one time, um, I think we were we were debating me and you, but it was you and your wife, like a funny debate. 
and you brought in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> You're like, look, remember when Goku had to get the spirit ball? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's funny. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what's funny about that is is I truly have used like Dragon Ball Z and even wrestling to a point, but most of Dragon Ball Z is like almost like a guide, you know, whenever I feel down, I think we all we all do something, whether it's religion, whether it's um friends, whether it's something that we see on TV, whatever it is. For me though, it's always funny because I always looked at like Dragon Ball Z, even music, even like leaving alone Dragon Ball Z, hip hop artists or singers, to me were like superheroes. Because, like, we have, like, our secret identity, you know, who we really are. And then we have our, like, alter ego or our character or whoever we put out to the world. And our superpower is, like, our ability to sing or our ability to rap or our ability to, to write, you know. And when I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid and even, you know, getting into music, I always thought of the characters almost as, like, artists. And their power level was, like, you know, how dope they are, you know. So, like, sometimes when I'm on stage, you know, and I'm, I'm killing it, I'm rapping, I feel like I'm powering up. And everybody's, you know, getting excited. And I kind of feel like Goku in Dragon Ball Z, what he kind of teaches you, because if you really watch all of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, he's not really the strongest guy in the world. He really is. There's so many other stronger opponents. He's not even the most naturally gifted, you know. And if you really look at it, there's other Saiyans that have more bigger power level. So with him, what, what makes him so special is that he is so obsessed with fighting, and he just loves the art of fighting and martial arts so much that he learns. He, he learns from all these different masters, all these different places, different planets. He even dies and learns in the other world and comes back. So it almost feels like if you love what you do, if you love your craft, you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to, like, I'm a dope rapper, but I, there's, there's still things to this day that I could learn, whether it's something about marketing, whether it's something about actually writing, whether it's something about my vocals to sing, whether it's, how to, you know, set up an event even better than what I've been setting up my own events. And that's what I think is a great lesson for Dragon Ball Z. It's like, you're never too good to learn to get to the next level. So just be humble, be grateful. And, you know, Goku's always polite to everybody. So I try to, I follow that, you know, even as an adult, I follow that. I try to be cool with everybody, you know, try to be down to earth. And for the most part, it's led me in the right direction, you know. So I appreciate I appreciate it for that. But hell yeah, Dragon Ball Z rocks for anybody out there that, Oh, I was going to wear my, my Goku shirt, but I've worn it way too often on radio interviews and shows. I'm like, is that the only shirt he owns? <laughs> so, hey, uh, well, well, real quick, I, I want to ask you something, man, because I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. Did you watch the Brawly movie? I did, man. I, I actually just finished Super recently, and it took me forever to really watch it because I don't know. You know, I just I, I, I started watching it, and then I would stop because – to me, it wasn't as good as Dragon Ball Z. Like, it was okay. It was cool. But, like, I'm a big fan of, of the whole franchise. So I was, like, judging every part of it. But I finally finished it, and it's actually not bad. Not as good as Z, obviously. But, yeah, the Broly movie was lit. Uh, the Broly movie was fucking crazy. I, I the, thought, the new one. Right? I thought I found that he, out of all, like, people, right, he's, like, this big dude. And yeah, he's, he's so stronger than Goku. I was even shocked. And that... Um, what happened was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because it's been a minute, I haven't watched it. Yeah, they take you back to when Goku's <laughs> father was around, right? Yeah, they bring you back to to Bardock, <laughs> right? Goku's father's name. and Gine. Gine is Goku's mom, and that's new because they had always talked about Bardock. So the thing with that movie is it kind of like changed a lot. <laughs> that's what people don't realize. Like the original story of. Dragon Ball Z, which is great, you know, I'm a fan, so I'll go with it, is Bardock was this ruthless warrior, um, but he was a low-level Saiyan, and he kind of had a feeling that Freeze was going to destroy the planet, so he sent off Goku, right? And it kind of follows that line, but now in this version of what they're telling, um, I guess Bardock kind of was getting soft, which is cool. He started, like, because he had a son, he kind of didn't want to keep destroying and killing things. He's like, I want to be a part of create of, of creating a life instead of destroying it. So that's different. And then you see Goku's mom, Gine, and the reason they sent him off is kind of the same reason that they have a feeling like Free is going to destroy the planet. So um, that was interesting to kind of see everybody and um, how they roll Broly into the story. It's a great movie. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, a fan of any type of animes, dope fighting scenes, roll one up, you know what I mean? Smoke up, 420, you know? <laughs> no, just like, you know, and watch it. I love, I love that shit, man. Get, getting high and watching cartoons, it's like... It's, if I'm not recording music, that's probably what I'm doing, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm with you, man. You you can't go wrong, man. That's like one of my favorite things to watch. Like you said, till this day, it's still a great show. I also are you? I forget, um, brother. Are you still into Yu Gi Oh? Um, I love all anime, man. I mean, I would say like I'm not like heavily into Yu Gi Oh. I was really into them when the card game was out when I was like in elementary school because I love playing the card game. But I'm not opposed to it. Like I like I like Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon, Digimon, whatever you want to throw at me, you know. You, you, Hakusho, fucking Sailor Moon and shit. I watch all that, bro. Like it's it's crazy. Because they did um they did a new movie, uh, Yu Gi Oh. Basically, oh for real? Yeah, yeah. So I forgot I the name of it. it. You gotta catch it, brother. I got it. On, like I, I bought it on YouTube <laughs> for like a dollar, but you know. What I'm oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no. But it's cool because you have Kaiba and Yugi. They team up, right? One of the biggest enemies, right? And they right. fight this guy who basically somehow brainwashes everyone in the world. And he wants to duel. But the thing is, if you do, I think, like, you could almost die. That's how bad it is. Something like that, yeah. They actually feel the pain of whatever their master yeah. going through or something like that. Yeah. So I thought it was really it's been a cool. minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, I used to watch it so much, man, like, on Sunday night. And I still remember the intro when they used to go, it's time to do the, 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 the duel. That's that? funny. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to have to post that shit and tag you in. Like, this what you're talking about? <laughs> right, right. Uh -huh. No, for real, man. I, I think it's crazy, man. I, I'm so glad, brother, you have the same spirit, man. You haven't changed. I, I just see you're more mature now. You're married now. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, you, you, you're making big moves. And it's crazy because I know you bef when you were single, and I know you when you were dating America, and then I know you now. Married. Now you're married. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's funny. So the next time is going to be a father. You know what I'm saying? Right. Be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real, for real. And, uh, you know, what's crazy is um, also, uh, when, when is this podcast coming out? It'll be out by, like, tomorrow or a few days? It's going to be out this Tuesday, my birthday. This is okay, cool, cool. So happy birthday to you. And I'm gonna let the people know August 21st. I'm also performing in Broadview, Illinois, uh, at Shorter Park. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a dope park. Um, uh, maybe about 30 minutes from the city. If you're in the Illinois, Chicago area, Chicago land area, come check me out. I'm performing two songs. There's gonna be hella people. I already got you know a bunch of tickets sold. Hit me up for tickets, they're twenty dollars a pop. You already know, man. Uh, it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be a bunch of dope artists too. Shout out to my people at Determined Radio, Antoine Famo, Police. We're setting it up. And, uh, you know, we're going to get it popping. It's going to be dope. And I, I'm going to send you some video. You already know it. You know? Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you. Now, August 21st. I was just saw, hey, guys, be sure to check it out. You got to go. You're going to have a great time. Now, Draymond, real, I want you to, if you got a little chance, a little time, you think you can do a little freestyle for me, brother? Of course, man. Of course. Of course. What you want me to rap about? Dragon Ball Z, of course. You gotta put some Dragon Ball Z. Add some, dra add some Dragon Ball Z. Add uh, my birthday August 12th at the Mariposa. Some people actually come. You feel me? Okay. You gotta okay. add that. And, and there you go, man. You know what? Anything you can think of. Those are the, the big topic. I'll say Dragon Ball Z, my birthday, Mariposa at that spot. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, check it out. So we're about to run up some numbers like your Sudoku. Super Saiyan Flow, you can call me Goku. Dragon Ball Z off the top of the dome. So you already know that I stay up in my zone. My boy Yakov about to celebrate his birthday. And when he party, you know he gonna do it the worst way. With the moves to the left, to the right, he gonna make you wanna hate on his ass all night. So August the 12th, go to Mariposa. Because you already know that we about to do La Cosa. And you know, I'm gangster with it like Cosa Nostra. Got my boys with me, and you know we about to pop. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> pop off the top, and you know I got the flow. And I smoke green. I ain't talking piccolo. You already know this how the game go. With the flames blow, and you know. I don't know. <laughs> Freestyle shit, you know. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That was good, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. That was, that was appreciate amazing, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mentioned the Cosa Nostra, like the Italian, bro. <laughs> right? I love that. I love that. Man, so now, now now, you got me to my next, my next, one of my next last question, one of my last questions. So, Dre Morrow, when is that reggaeton song going to come, brother? Because you oh, have man, a man. I need it to come. <laughs> it's coming, man. It's coming. You know, I actually, uh, I, I linked up with a few, a few dudes out here, and when I was in Texas, 
in Dallas, there's a few uh, kind of reggaeton uh, hip hop artists that kind of do both. So um, I'm not sure if it's going to be on the EP because I kind of want to keep a theme for the EP. But after the EP, man, for a while, I'm just going to be dropping single upon single upon single. So you're going to get you're going to get some Spanish music from me because I really that's something that I've really been wanting to do. And, and I just wanted to meet the right artists so they can maybe help me put it together right. And it's gonna come. It's gonna come for sure. So y'all can get jiggy with my shit, you know. <laughs> I love it. Look, cause go, go to the Latin clubs, get jiggy with it. Hey, that, that's what I'm saying. Because, <laughs> because like I always, I always tell you, man, the the thing about you, man, because you speak Spanish, it's part of your culture. And right, like right. I always said, man, I told Ad Schaefer too in my last a couple episodes ago. I was like, this would definitely make you an international artist for sure. Right. That's what we need, brother, because we already know you can rap English. I ain't nobody, right, you know right. what I'm saying? But no you're one right. knows that my brother can speak Spanish. And like you said, you know, just rapping, Mariposa, you know, the Costa, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> For real. so here's the thing, man. You know, I always uh, I always tell people when I'm tough on them, it's because I love them. If I wasn't tough, yeah. I would just say you're doing great. You know what I'm saying? You got Right. No, no, it's, it's, it's a great, you know, and. I actually, because of you, I've had the idea, you know, to do something like that for a while. It's just, I want to do it right. You know, when I do it, I don't want it to come out corny. I want it to be like, oh, shit. You know, even if it takes time, I've always, a, a saying that I love to live by and I encourage a lot of people to live by is, it's not always who does it first, it's who does it best. So I'm, I'm trying to be the one who does it best. You know what I mean? So. I like <laughs> That's good. That's good. That got me thinking about it. You, if you think you about it, like MySpace came out first. But Facebook did it better, and now Facebook's still around. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a that's a great analogy. That's how, <laughs> that's how I know he's smart, guys. That's how you know he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. <laughs> wow, that's that's amazing, brother. Now, real quick, I want to ask you something that a lot of fans want to know: How do you keep a healthy relationship? What's the best tip for? Because I get a lot of people that are married for the first time; they're still in yeah. a rock, rocky boat, right? And they're trying to learn how to live with each other and still keep that, I guess, what's the word? That spark. Yeah. Um, it's like any other relationship, man. You gotta like it, you almost gotta look at it like a business relationship in a way. You know, I mean you gotta have the romance and all that, but you gotta remember that any relationship wanes over time. So, you know, when when us as human beings, when we feel underappreciated, when we feel alone when we feel you know like we don't have support we start to act out we start to you know put out a negative energy so as far as my marriage man what i try to do is i i try to keep my wife involved in everything i do to the point that now she's my manager you know and i think that's actually helped my relationship a lot because we spend a lot of time doing music together and, and even if we're not you know she's not an artist but at least you know there's something that we can always you know come back to she loves, you know, um, kind of doing the music business with me, too. So that helps, I would say. So aside from doing that communication, it sounds corny, but communication is absolutely key, just like a business relationship. Like if, if we have money involved and we're doing business, you don't communicate with me. And I think I'm making $100 and I open the envelope and there's $50 in that motherfucker. I'm like, what's going on? So it's, it's the same thing with the marriage. Like, you know, you got to communicate constantly. So both of you know what to expect. Both of you can be on the same page. And just remember that it's teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, you know? So um, there's going to be things that I can do better. Even now, there's things that I can improve and do better. There's things that my wife can improve and do better. But together, we should be helping each other. The things that I lack, she should be helping me out. And the things that she lacks, I'm helping her out. So uh, we're always growing. You know, a, a couple that isn't growing is dying. So you, you want to continue to grow with your partner financially, um, mentally, spiritually, Physically, even, you know, like, you know, you guys can work out together and that's your time together. If you guys can go to church together, some people believe, you know, are spiritual and that's what they believe in. That's great. Us, we have our music that we do together, um, but always finding something that you could, you know, communicate and then trust, man. And it's hard because, you know, there's things that, you know, no couple's perfect. There's things that the man is going to do that's going to kill that trust at times. Things the woman is going to do that are going to kill that trust. But, you know, uh, not to get too, you know, holy art thou on you, but God created man and woman, so we're together for a reason, and even when we when we fall off track, it's, it's our partner's job to kind of help steer us back on track, so a lot of times, 
especially when I was young, I, I might look at a girl because she's cute or because, you know, she's um, maybe popular or things like that. But in the long run, that's not going to benefit you, you know, just because a girl's good looking doesn't mean that she's going to be down for you. A girl could be gorgeous. What does it matter if you could lose her at any moment because she's not down for you? So you got to look at it for a woman that is beautiful. My wife's beautiful, but also has the brains, has the heart, has everything that matches my vibe, you know, so we could roll out together. And, and it takes time. Um, I actually found her without looking for her in, in a weird way. So I encourage people, don't look for that partner. Just live your life. You know, your life, the energy, the positive energy you're putting on the world will bring your partner to you when the time is right. But you just got to focus on you and follow your heart. You follow your heart, everything's going to fall in place, you know. I like that, man. That was that. That definitely woke me up, man. I was like, "Whoa, this, <laughs> my my brother getting getting so deep." You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I like that. Well, guys, let me wrap it up, guys. This is the outlet to reality. The hold this podcast, in Vegas and Chicago, every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Ching ching. Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Spotify. I'm on YouTube. Is the outlet and Instagram the outlet to reality? And my Snapchat is take one pass it, and my TikTok is at Yakov28. And Dre Mar, where can my fans find you? You can find me on all social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok now, even though I haven't posted anything. I'm on TikTok and Dre Mar262 all stream uh, on all like social media, and then on streaming platforms, I'm found under Dre Marl. So Dre like Dr. Dre, D-R-E. Space Amazon Mary A R R O, you know, and then you could see all my new content. My new EP should be dropping in late September. I'm out, I'm also have a listening party uh, somewhere in my hometown or in, in between, you know, the city or my hometown. I'll keep you all updated on dates on that. And again, man, August 21st, check me out at Shorter Park in Bravue, Illinois. Hit me up for tickets again at Draymond Two Six Two. We about to shut it down. You already know. Hey. <laughs>